In our last video, we saw that time series data consists of a trend, seasonality, cycles, and irregularity. And seasonal data has basically three components of these, which is the trend, seasonality, and irregularity. And non-seasonal data consists of only two, trend and irregularity. And today we're only going to focus on this non-seasonal data and see how we can best decompose it. So we try to go from a plot that looks more like this, where it would really be kind of hard to understand what the trend is, to a plot that is like this, which where the line is a lot smoother and we can basically see a much better overall trend in the data. And to do this, we use the simple moving average. Uh, it gives you a smooth average that helps to reduce the impact of short-term fluctuations in the data. So we basically calculate an average over a specified period. So this is the formula for the SMA, and you can see that we specify an N, which is the number of periods that we want one uh, average to be calculated from, and if we do that multiple times, we get a much more smoother line. So how do we do this in R? Well, here I have an overview of the closing prices of the Apple stock uh, starting from 2018, and I've already prepared this data, so we can go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. It's a time series data, as you can see, and there may be already kind of an identifiable trend, but there's also still quite some irregularity in the data, and we'd like to further isolate this trend effect. Um, the package that we use for this is TTR. So here you can go ahead and install the packages and use library TTR. Um, and within this TTR package, there is a function that we're interested in, which is the SMA function. So let's go ahead and use this function. So we call this apple close SMA. You can really call this anything you like. And what we do is we use this SMA function. As you can see here, it consists of an X and an N. Well, the X is just the data set that we're interested in. So here we just use the Apple close data. And the N here that we specify, we talked about before, uh, it really is just the number of periods for the moving average. And the higher this number is, the smoother your line is gonna be. So we go ahead and we try 10 here. And then if we do plot Apple close SMA, and we run both of these, then this graph will show up as smoother than it is right now, which will show a better trend basically than it does right now. So let's see if that works. It works, that looks good. However, I think it doesn't make that big of a difference. So if we increase this number of N from 10 to, let's say, let's do something very big, 100, and just let's see what it does. Like now you see that the line's already a lot smoother. Uh, so it's interesting that we see that this increase in number of n will show a better trend over time, but there are definitely drawbacks as well as um, of making this number very large. To show you once again what the drawbacks uh, and benefits may be of different uh, levels of smoothness, I've prepared here three different simple moving averages. Um, here we can see the original data. If we plot the first line over that, this is the line where an n is 50, where we can see it very closely follows the data. It may still have some irregularities, but it shows a pretty good trend. This line where the n is 150 is even smoother. And you can see that some of the irregularities that you can see in the orange line here are smoothened out uh, in the um, n is 151. And here we have an n that is 500, where you can see that it starts very late. It starts January 2020 as opposed to earlier because it needs all those prior points to calculate the first point. And the only real data or the only real information you can draw from this is that there's basically an upward trend, but I think it misses some of the nuances that you can see in, in the more short-term data. So your choice of N is really based on what you want to achieve. Do you want to look at only very long-term data or do you want to look a little bit more short-term? And based off of that, you choose which N you think is most relevant. So just to quickly recap, to decompose non-seasonal data, we use the simple moving average. And then R, we use the TTR package for this and the SMA function, where data is your time series data, and N is the number of periods for the moving average. And the higher this number, the smoother your line's going to be.